Sub sub flappers, the new banner squad is great for Eula and as I have seen many mention that Mahoyo tends to put a solid team into the banner so that players can get a good team together. Well the thing is, in this video I want to put that to the test. I am just your average player and I'd argue that I even have better ping and gear set up than 80% of the player base. Of course, don't bother stack checking that number, I just made it up on the spot. But nonetheless, how can someone like myself fare against the rest of this game with just the banner squad? Now do note that my characters are not leveled all the way up, but I have poured a good amount of resources into them including weapons, artifacts, and some talent levels. So while I don't expect this team to 3 star Abyss 12, I do think that it should be a valid way to take them throughout the game for some testing. First as always, we have Child, our old friend. I mean, it's at this point, if a team can't beat Child relatively easily, can they really be considered a team? So while it certainly was not easy, because I really wouldn't call myself a Beto expert, I somehow managed to beat the boss while keeping my entire team alive. Eula certainly did good damage and with the assistance of Xingqiu, we punched through Child like he was paper when the damage got rolling. So onwards now to our next test subject, one of the Regis Vines. Because I am a gentle damage tester here, I only picked on one of the Regis Vine flower today and since Eula is blue, it just made sense that I'd go with, yes, you guessed it, the red one. Now, while fighting the Pyro Regis Vine, it became quickly apparent that the team was doing way too much damage, and while normally you'd chalk it up and say, well, then that must mean that the team is pretty good then, right? Not here, not on the Walrus channel, because we must push further, and further, beyond. So I decided to pay Zhongli's pet rock a visit. Now with my recent domination over the Pyro Regis Vine, I had gone in feeling quite positive that I should be able to emerge victorious. Now of course, I have a bare bone understanding of the mechanics because why would I need to know anymore when I can always just strongly shield my way through everything in the game? So while I wouldn't say I am sitting atop the apex of Genshin players, I'm a decent player with enough reaction speed to say I'm in the 22nd percentile regardless of whichever side that is deviating towards. I'm fairly average, alright? That's what I'm trying to say, people. Get off me. Now. What is the point of saying all this? Let's just say I got rolled, okay? After gearing up, I gave it another shot and uh, while I did do better this time round, I still got rolled. So ultimately, I went and studied the boss mechanics while also powering up some of my units to close my gap and after a grueling battle, I did manage to beat it without breaking a single sweat. So it quickly showed that this team is not just a plug and play team. You cannot overpower all content in the game without a second thought, but playing around your advantages while also understanding the mechanics of your opponents is a must when tackling slightly more difficult content in the game. So of course, when speaking of slightly more difficult content, I decided it was time to take my elite team of Eula and her undergeared supports to challenge Abyss Floor 12. And to my surprise, it must have been from my struggles with Ajda Hub that I was able to synergize the team extremely well through Chamber 1 and even into Chamber 2. I was able to withstand the onslaught of bandits as I made quick work out of most of them. To be honest, I did think I would struggle a bit more, but the key players to pull through are definitely Beidou's perfect counter and Xingqiu's Gu Hua sword. Do know that if we were to have pit this team against the second half of Chamber 2, Xingqiu would have been a burden due to Hydro Mimics, but Beidou and Jin Yan could have picked up where Xingqiu lacked, ultimately making this roster still viable up to this point. Then came peace. Well, the Abyss Lecter certainly posed a big threat to this team, and it was to be expected from fighting Ajdaha that close combat high burst enemies are the weakness to this team. And that's funny because every single unit in this team is built for close quarter combat. Of course, this could just be me completely misplaying the units, but do keep in mind that with the exception of Eula, everyone else on the team was Ascension 4, either level 60 or level 70. While the difference between this and level 80, let's say with Ascension 5, is not a lot to write home about stat-wise, it still would have made a difference and helped in clutch situations. Also, with 3 out of the 4 units in the team needing 80 energy per burst skill with no battery whatsoever, it made the team have insanely high down 
time, resulting in the need to dodge and weave from lethal hits. And for those knowing this floor, it's quite the difficult task to have no dedicated healer and only one Jinyan shield to work around. Finally, noting that for Jinyan shield to be at level 3, you need to be hitting at least 3 enemies with her elemental skill, which was unavailable in this scenario. Or you could use her burst skill, which with no battery, it was also fairly unreliable. So this only added to the disadvantage of running this team against these enemies. Of course, with the two lectors being not one-shottable, ultimately disposing them quickly was also not an option. So taking that away from Eula, we were kind of in a pickle. So I would not go as far as saying that the lectors were a hard counter to the team, but it was certainly a challenge. Without a dedicated healer, a more durable and reliable shielder would have been better to run instead, such as Diona. So if you were to take away Jinyan for Diona, let's say this could be a much better situation, although you would still have a tough battle regardless. You certainly have a much better chance at clearing the stage. So in the end, I would rate this banner squad of 6.5 out of 10. This is with the consideration that you have reached all the constellation breakpoints for each unit, such as constellation 4 for Jinyan, constellation 1 for Xingqiu, and constellation 2 for Beidou. The strength of this team is in the diversity of elements and the ability to quick burst damage and even CC potential with freeze. While if given the opportunity, short windows of tanking and even health regen are possible, but in the face of hard hitting enemies, you may find that your shields are severely lacking. Finally, apart from Xingqiu, the other two units on the banner being Beidou and Jingyan do have difficult time finding dedicated spots in many teams, making them not as worthy of long-term investment. So when speaking from pure banner value as well, you do lose out a bit going for additional constellations on two thirds of the four stars currently available on the banner. So in the end, personally, I would not recommend running this team. And if you're serious in playing Eula and are looking for good team recommendations, do check out my Eula team guide video from yesterday detailing five amazing teams you can run with Eula. So until tomorrow's live stream, where we will surely talk about whether or not Eula was worth it in hindsight, and maybe we'll turn that into a YouTube video. So do turn up and potentially be featured in one of my videos. So until tomorrow's live stream, once again, I do urge you all to stay safe and peace, peace.